What is up everyone, today I'll be abusing the strongest fast move in the game, Counter, by running a triple counter team in the Summer Cup. Opsigun in the lead with Vigoroth and Blaziken in the back. I'll be running Hyper Beam on Opsigun just because it's very nice coverage for some of the flyers as a surprise nuke or to hit Azumarill. This team might seem a little weak against flying types, especially those that resist Counter like Tropius and Talonflame, but they are very manageable usually you're gonna have to use one and a half of your fighters to take them down but then whatever they have left is usually quite weak against counter overall this team did pretty well for me i went slightly positive around the 33 3400 elo range anyway let's get into these battles starting off with a vigoroth lead which is absolutely terrible for Opsigun. so i switch into my blaziken here which is going to be my usual pivot in this line it just has less hard counters than vigoroth because you know trevenant is everywhere and you really don't want to get your Vigoroth stuck on that. Blaziken, however, doesn't really have that many hard counters that are meta. Probably Azumarill is the only real one, but it's not as common as Trevenant, so I feel kind of safe switching it in. And in comes a King Jar there, which is also not great for Blaze, but at least I take a shield with a Blast Burn there. Get shield advantage, which now gets evaporated by that outrage. But that was a very good shield by me, because that would have definitely knocked me out. I'm expecting the Vigoroth to come back in, but they actually come back in with Nine tilts. And this is looking like a prime opportunity to throw this beam. I don't expect them to shoot. And they don't. The Nine tilts gets taken out. I bring in my Vigoroth versus their Vigoroth now. They are, have an energy lead. So they will get the two body stamps for me. But if I can survive, I should be fine. And even if I don't, I still have a small chance if I get to the Night Slash with Opsigun. I'm just going to shield this up though. Uh, force him to throw another body slam. And then hopefully get to my own. We see MP tie here. Unfortunately, I lose it. If I survive this move, mine should be able to knock him out. I barely survive. I throw the body slam, and that is the end of this game. GG to my opponent. All right, Tropius lead. This is a pretty bad lead since all three of my Pokemon technically lose to this. But like I said earlier, most Tropius lead lines are very manageable since they usually come with fighting weak Pokemon in the back. So I'm going to have to spend like one and a half of my fighters here to take this thing out. But then I should be able to deal with the fighting weak Pokemon in the back with uh, the rest of my fighters. At least if this is one of the more common Tropius lines like a Double Rock, for example, I should be all right. All right I end up shielding here because I have a ton of energy. I keep building up to the Hyper Beam, but my opponent is not respecting it. That's fine with me, though. I've, I've I had another matchup, which you're going to see later, where I throw Hyper Beam and I actually shield it. And that is quite devastating. So... I'd rather have them no shield these night slashes and have them shield a hyper. So it's just much safer. Just get some good chip in. But even though I shielded a leaf blade and they no shielded every single night slash, I still didn't take them out. So I lose switch and shield advantage, which is probably the worst thing that can happen in a lead matchup. I do gain a little bit of energy on my Vigoroth though. But a Russell comes in, so it's not going to be very useful. These body slams aren't doing too much. Uh, you might wonder why I didn't even build up to the Bulldoze. That's mainly because I just wanted some consistent damage on this Crustle. I'm expecting a Macargo in the back at this point. And, well, I just, I honestly just want that thing to come in as fast as possible so I can start countering it down. My charge moves really wouldn't do that much damage versus it anyway. And it is the Macargo in the back. So, we are looking pretty alright at this point. As long as they don't knock out my Blaziken with a Rock Tomb, I should be fine. The Blaziken is quite squishy. I'm pretty worried at this point, but Blaziken tanks it. I go for the blood or for a fresh for the Blaziken bait here. At this point, honestly, unnecessary. I should have really just gone for the counter down with it. This felt a little safer just in case I got to another move, but I end up countering down. It's a really good game. All right, you know, Vinston physically, this is definitely where I want to see it. We don't want to see it on Blaze, but a Beedrill comes in, and this is just really really rough when shields are down beedrill is very fine for me because i can like blaze kick it i can wiper bean it but when shields are up this is bad big girls should be able to get to like two body slams though if they act scissor but this is actually a sludge bomb beedrill so yeah this uh, is not good especially since they shield at that move and well i also can't really bring in blaze at this point since blaze just gets to the moves pretty slowly like common Obstagon, so I can hopefully outpace this B drill to some uh, Night Slashes. They actually don't even end up running X Scissor, which is wild. They run Drill Run, and well, even, even though they run Drill Run, 
they're still getting to plenty of these moves and they fire another one before i fire off my night slash this is not looking too good they bring in the fist right now honestly i have one hope here and that is that they allow me to get to the hyper beam and let me beam them and then hopefully there's like i don't know my cargo in the back but yeah they don't they discharge and at this point it is all over swept by a freaking b gg Obstagoon mirror lead. I switched to Blaziken here. I have two good answers to Obstagoon in the lead, so there's no point in me staying in with my own right there. Bringing the B draw here, like we saw in the last match, this thing isn't too good for my team. But I'm glad to see it here since I can burn some shields here and hopefully even take it out. I shoot this up just in case the drill run. I know there are two Exorcers, but I also know one doesn't knock out. So they get to the, if they fire a second one right there, which they do. I'm just gonna no shield, should be able to survive, get off the blaze kick hopefully knock it out but if i take a shield there it's fine as well then i should be able to take out uh the beat roll with my vigor off but luckily they let it go and then they farm me down with the knocked out it's looking pretty good at this point since i should be able to get my vigor off aligned to their obstagon right now which is an amazing matchup for vigor off as well and my obstagon does fine against the knockout they're gonna take this high tech because it really doesn't do that much and then the obstagon comes in i'm gonna go for the beam right here which is completely unnecessary but I really just wanted to hit it, and we do. Bye-bye, Obstagoon. They bring in the knocked out there. That was honestly so unnecessary. If they shielded that, I might have had a problem. And honestly, a shield there would have been kind of expected, I would say. Since, well, most Obstagoons just run cross top, and that would one-shot as well. So, yeah, kind of a risky beam, but it paid off. So, we will take that. I think even if they shielded that, though, I would have come in bigger off and just farm them all all the way down and then i would have had two body slams for the knocked out to take it out as well the final body slam right here takes out the knocked out gg all right another tropius lead like i said before not an ideal lead because all three of your fighters lose to this but usually the pokemon in the back lose to all three of your fighters so it's kind of fine i'll let this first one go hoping that will mean they also let my move go actually i go for a night slash here I was too afraid to go for the beam at this point. But we will throw a beam next. And that's going to end up being a big mistake. They actually shield that first one. Which makes me believe they're going to no shield the next one. Because I threw a night slash. If you have hyper beam and it's a surprise, you're going to throw it instantly, right? So I don't expect them to shield this. But I, spo I spoiled it already. I spoiled it in the beginning of the video, basically. They're going to shield this beam. Which, uh, well, isn't too good. Look at how much health Astropius has and how much energy too. They actually have two Leaf Blades right now, which is insane. It's it's very bad. I bring in my Vigor though and I actually switch in Golem, which gives me a very good chance here to roll out Golem too. So these fast moves are doing no damage. This charge move will do a ton of damage though. So actually shoot it up. Good shoot because it was a huge Stone Edge right there. Farming this Golem all the way down now. They're probably gonna bring in a Tropius again here. I don't throw my Body Slam though, just yet, just in case they do bring in a Rock type. Like my Cargo, I wanna throw the Bulldoze on it. Yeah, this is a Tropius. I throw the Leaf Bed, I throw a Body Slam now on the CMP tile. Like I said, they had two Leaf Beds stored, which wasn't too great. Uh, this will almost knock me out. Actually, this might not. No, I don't think it does. I don't think it does. I think I'm gonna switch Blaze here. Because I was expecting them to switch too. And I think even if they didn't, I would have been able to to, uh, to farm down. So they do switch. And I get to the Blast Burner. They shoot, knock out the Alolan Graveler. And then the Tropius is basically dead. Since I already have uh, Body Slam loaded on my uh, Vigoroth as well. And it's not even necessary because I countered down GG. Crustle lead is not amazing for Obstagoon. Uh, but it's decent enough to where I can kind of stay in here. Uh, throw at 7 right before I get to the x scissor and then I'll switch out because I really don't want to take an x scissor on Obstagoon. So switch to my Vigor of Hoping they throw immediately, but they don't. They're going to throw right here, which could actually be a Rock Slide. So I'm going to end up shooting that up, expecting the Rock Slide. And it was the Rock Slide, so good shoot by me. In comes a Jealous, though. And this is quite rough. This is why I usually don't switch in Vigor of. I said at the, at the beginning of the video, don't switch in your Vigor of as a pivot. Uh, against Crustle, I usually do end up doing that. I don't know why, actually. Mainly because Vigoroth can just tank moves better. Uh, but I end up shielding a charge move anyway. Honestly, I should probably switch Blaze. It wouldn't matter in this battle, though. In this battle, it would be much worse for Blaze to be matched up against a Jelly. So I guess, good job to me for calling the lineup. Um, and not switching Blaze. 
Because I actually do get the jelly quite low. I do get the jelly quite low. I don't reach another bulldoze though, I think. So I go for the body slam here. Really hoping they miscount it. But my opponent, very good. No shielded. The bulldoze. And now it's going to be able to unleash bubble beams on my obstacle. This is not so good. But so far we haven't seen any counter weak Pokemon. So maybe we do in the back. And we do in the back. It's a Vigoroth. But like Vigoroth versus Blaze really isn't that good for Blaze, unfortunately. They're now two counters away from a move. Yeah, so I throw on the CMP Tide just to take a shield. And now I gotta hope I can farm down the Vigoroth and then get the two Night Slashes versus uh, Jettison. It's, it's what we're gonna have to have to do right now. But I end up taking so much counter damage that I'm now in range where a Bubble Beam will knock me out. So I don't even bother throwing my Night Slash. I know I have a Bubble Beam stored and this will knock me out. So GG. We can actually got very... Actually, the Bubble Beam didn't knock out. If I would have taken one less counter from the Vigoroth, I probably could have done that. Obstagoon versus Vigoroth. Another terrible lead. Of course, I switch into my Blaze here. Lure out the Kingdra. This time it's a regular Kingdra, so the Blast Burn won't do as much. But still, it's a Blast Burn from a Blaze. You can most of them respect this just because it does a ton of damage. Uh, I don't think they have to though. Actually, yeah, the actually the Blast Burn plus these counters would have knocked out. So it's good they respected that because now they get switched and they're able to throw a move on my Obstagoon. Gonna, sh gonna shield it up because it could be an Outrage and they do Outrage. Another great shield right there. Would have been a real bummer if they op op the Zook Act and got the, the buff. So luckily it was just the Outrage. In comes the Vigoroth again. Do I go for the Beam? Oh, I might go for the Beam here. Might just go for the Beam. Yeah, I'm gonna survive this Body Slam. Go for the Beam. Hope. They let this go right here and then hope I can deal with whatever is in the back. I bring him a Vigoroth. In comes that Talonflame. This is not as bad as you might think. Vigoroth can win this. I make a mistake though. I throw my Bully Slam immediately. Which opens up the door for them to throw Brave Bird. Wait, I'm going to pause this real quick. There, there are basically two win conditions for me. If I shoot up a Brave Bird, I win. Because I will get to... Two more body slams before they get to the next Brave Bird. If they flame charge and I no shield, I win as well. Because they can't incinerate me down before I get to two more body slams. My loose con is no shielding a Brave Bird or shielding a flame charge. So it's a 50-50. But if I just overcharged, if I just overcharged uh to when they to till after they throw a move, that makes that call a little easier for me. Because they basically can't Brave Bird since then my body slams would not come out. So they have to flame charge, which makes it an easy no shield call for me. Uh, now though, it makes a hard call. I still no shield expecting the flame charge, uh, but since I, I like since I threw my energy dead early, they're pretty safe to go Brave Bird. So the Brave Bird there, they knocked me out and uh, it's game over, GG. Warren lead is obviously very good for me since I have three answers for it on my team. They bring in a Vigoroth here, which respond to with my Blaziken, which is honestly not even that great of a counter, unfortunately. Even though I'm doing super effective with these counters, Vigoroth still gets the two body slams before I reach two Blaze Kick, which uh, means it's able to win the one shield. Not ideal, but I'm if I just put double shield here, I'm able uh, to win the twos and end up with a bunch of energy to throw at a whatever comes in next. But that is the plan. Gonna shield with this next body slam. And then I'll get out of this matchup with almost a blaze kick and close to a blast burn as well. Let's see what they come in with next. It is the war and they're just using that uh, as like a sacrifice right now, I think. So I'm gonna hit the blaze kick. I should have really gone for blast burn here, actually, since I didn't expect them to shield. But they actually do end up shooting. So good bait, I guess. My opponent's keeping very good track of energy. They throw their move. Run before I get to the blaze kick, so nice play by them, but I have two counters for this still, so I'm looking pretty good. Gonna go for a night slash here. They should knock out the warren at this point, and hopefully there's something in the back that I can deal with. Anything but Blaziken, really. Well, even Blaziken I should be fine against, honestly, and it's a Trevenant, so at this point, this game is over. Just like the video. Hope you all enjoyed. See you in the next one. Look, well, trainers.